This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, or T-minus one hour, 29 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. Finishing up at this time are the check of the emergency detection system. Skip Chauvin, the Roger, test supervisor, now also making some, the spacecraft test supervisor, making some checks with the various members of the team, launch crew, inside the spacecraft. The boost protective cover has now come closed. This is a cover which will protect the spacecraft hatch both from the jettisoning of the launch escape system and also as it uh, develops some friction as it goes up through the heavy Earth's atmosphere. The crew now, as, as they prepare the boost protective cover, will also be going around the white room, doing what's called breaking up the white room or generally preparing it for retraction. Once the closeout crew departs the white room area, that white room will be retracted to a standby position. It will remain in that standby position down through the countdown to the T-minus five minute mark, at which time it will come back to the fully retract position. Now T-minus one hour, 28 minutes, 52 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
he's standing right just below point six. Pilot pattern launch control, T minus one hour, 19 minutes, 58 seconds, and counting. At this time, the closeout crew has reported from the White Room that they are in the last stages of clearing out the White Room and making it ready for its retract position.
Also going on at this time are some computer checks with the launch vehicle. These computer checks will be run continuously throughout the final portion of the countdown to ensure that the ground computers are communicating properly with the computers aboard the space vehicle. The launch crew had been having some problems with a vent valve in the first stage of the liquid oxygen tank. As mentioned earlier, the liquid oxygen, as it does boil off, is vented to the atmosphere. One of these vent valves appeared to be sticking. That problem now does appear to be solved as it has been brought closed. Now, T minus one hour, 19 minutes, eight seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
Roger, going duty to your line. Control T minus one hour, nine minutes, fifty nine seconds and counting. 
at this time in the command module out of the, the three crewmen, spacecraft commander Clark. Jim Lovell, command module pilot Jack Swigert, and rear module pilot Fred Hayes are very busy. Uh, the uh, spacecraft commander and command module pilot are configuring the stabilization and control system for liftoff and Roger. aligning that system with the guidance platform aboard the spacecraft. Also going on at this time is a check of the large propulsion system engine uh, below the service module. This engine can be gimbaled in response to commands. This is done in, in two ways, and these no systems response. are being checked out at this time. Is there is a thumb wheel control which can set the engine so, to a preset position for certain maneuvers and also a rotational hand controller which can be used for the actual flight of a maneuver. These checks are being made now, the engine being gimbaled with spacecraft commander Jim Lovell indicating the position that he is putting these to and readouts are being made to ensure that the engine is gimbling in proper response. Also at this time a final check out by the crew of the entry monitoring system. Also a final setting of this system. Our countdown proceeding well at this time, T-minus 1 hour, 8 minutes, 40 seconds. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Uh, okay. That's it, Secretary 1. How's that up here? Next announcement at 13 past the hour. How's that on y'all? Okay. Primary coming off. Primaries are off, Chip. Skip. And hand control is locked. Okay. And they're both auto. DVD server powers one and two going off. We're back to S two S four B. Roger, FDI flight is one half. Parts is CMP. Roll is one six two. Pitch is zero nine zero. Zero Neil. Now on the way. 
right at the VIP site. Okay, thank you. Want, but... Okay, okay. Uh, completed, Skip. Yeah, it looks good. I'm back on up. I went to 45 to the right. Let's put it back. CDC line has been released. Off. EMS roll back to off. Jack, this is the vice president and the chancellor have arrived, right? right? That's correct. Okay. So is that the... That's they are now on their way to the VIP site. Roger. Really want audio control on cue. Really want audio control on cue. That's uh, going to uh, GDC. Spilling, why don't you call? Roger that. Okay, here are your instructions Roger. for audio tape playback. I will need one tape and GDC line is beginning complete. at T minus 30 seconds. Carry it through Source the insertion. We'll want to play Number it back in half. Canary Yellow West, or? Well, this is 10, but I've got it. Okay, you got all that? Roger. T from T minus 30 through insertion. Yeah, Roger that. Right. Stand by. Play back in Canary Yellow West. Right. right. Uh, run to T minus 30 this time, right? Check in. Go T minus 30. T minus 30 seconds. Okay. I told everybody to minus 10 like we'd always know. Yeah, right, right, you want us to stretch a little bit. No, okay, fine, Daddy. I'll give you your option of either real time or vocked. Okay. Okay, Doyle, it's just about 12 minutes worth of real time, so let's take it real time, okay? No box. I'll give you a box anyway, just for backup. Roger. Uh, broadcast fan, I've got this mic now right on my mouth. Is this uh, okay? Yeah, it'll be fine, sir. Was, uh, was the last, were the last couple okay? They were better, but uh, it's getting quite a bit of background noise. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't get it much closer. Okay, we'll try to see how it works this time. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're just passing the one-hour mark in our countdown. 
Now in the final hour of the countdown toward the launch of Apollo 13. The closeout crew has now left the white room area and will be standing by for the retraction to the 12 degree position of swing arm number nine. We receive word from the distinguished guest site that the stands over there are near capacity with some 4,500 guests in the area. The Vice President of the United States, Byra Agnew, and Chancellor Willie Brandt, his special guests have arrived in the area, although they are not at the stands yet. Out on the causeway at a guest site, we have 7,000. This is the largest guest number that we have ever had on our causeway site. To recap our countdown, which has gone, proceeded very well today, we resumed the count after a 9 hour and 13 minute built in hold at 4.13 a.m. this morning. At that time, the cryogenic loading began. This is loading board the extremely cold liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen is the fuel for the second and third stage. Liquid oxygen, the oxidizer used on all three stages. RP-1, or rocket propellant number one, is the fuel used in the first stage. It is a kerosene-type fuel and was loaded before the countdown demonstration back in mid-March. The cryogenic loading went well. There's over 800,000 gallons of cryogenics loaded aboard the Saturn V vehicle at this time. We entered a, a one-hour built-in hold. This is a planned hold at the T-minus three-hour and 30-minute mark. The crew was alerted this morning, shortly before 9 a.m., by Colonel Tom Stafford, chief of the astronaut office. They then proceeded for a short and brief medical examination by Dr. John Keegan and Dr. Alan Harder. They were pronounced in good shape and ready for their flight. They then had the traditional breakfast of steak and eggs, tenderloin steak, eggs, orange juice, coffee, jelly, and toast. After a brief mission briefing, they donned their spacesuits and took the eight-mile trip in the transfer van to the pad area. They have now been in the spacecraft going through a variety of tests and checks, going over all their switch lists and so on. Our weather at this time is better than had been predicted earlier. We're still looking for some clouds to move into the area, and we'll be expecting a temperature of approximately 80 degrees at our launch time. We continue counting down toward a launch time of 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now at T-minus 57 minutes, 15 seconds and counting, this is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus 55 minutes and counting. T minus 55 minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to go well here at the Kennedy Space Center. The closeout crew has now left the white room. We're standing by for the retraction of the swing arm. Swing arm number nine, that's actually scheduled to come at the 43 minute mark in the countdown. However, the closeout crew did leave somewhat early, so that event could come a little bit early then. Good morning, you with us on the switch over. We'll go to the manned spacecraft Roger. center in Houston, Texas for a status. Now this is Mission Control Houston. Okay. At the present time, the flight controllers here in Mission Control are monitoring the countdown and the status of the crew, the launch vehicle, and the spacecraft. The Worldwide Manned Spaceflight Network is up and ready to support the launch. Now we do have a problem with the Vanguard tracking ships downrange in the Mid-Atlantic. A tracking data processor, we understand, is down on the Vanguard, and we will not get high-speed radar tracking uh, unless this problem is cleared up. Uh, the Vanguard is a desirable element of the tracking network, but is not essential, and we'll go to continue the launch with that problem. Just a few minutes ago, Ken Mattingly, who until a few days ago was the prime command module pilot for Apollo 13, arrived in mission control. Uh, Ken will be assisting at the Capcom console, and he's joined uh, astronaut John Young and astronaut uh, Joe Kerwin on the Capcom console. As he arrived in mission control, uh, Flight Director Milton Windler uh, greeted him and uh, said, Sorry to see you here, Ken. Uh, this is Mission Control Houston at uh, T minus 53 minutes and 20 seconds. Cape, you got it. Don't you coming up? No, we've already. We, we're through and I punched you back up. Uh, Nate, not unless you want to. Okay. Is that a clip? That's a clip from Houston. One run. Sorry, I didn't know you wanted me to.
Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 49 minutes, 58 seconds, and counting. At this time, we're uh, making some preparations for range safety command system checks. These checks are the system aboard the launch vehicle, which could be used by the range safety officer to destroy the vehicle should it stray off path off its intended course. These uh, destruct actions, of course, would not be taken until the astronaut crew had been advised and were safely away from the vehicle. We're also standing by to uh, wait for swing arm nine to retract. That uh, should be happening within the next five or ten minutes. The countdown continuing to move along nicely in the last hour now. T-minus 49 minutes, 20 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Uh, 
is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus 45 minutes and counting. T minus 45 minutes and counting. Crafts are now underway for moving the swing arm back to the 12 degree or park position. Launch site recovery forces have called in at this point and have indicated they're on station and ready to support the launch of Apollo 13. The prime crew inside the spacecraft at this time left the manned spacecraft, manned spacecraft operations building at Kennedy Space Center at 11.07 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning on their way out to the pad. They took the eight-mile trip in the transfer van, went up to the white room level where spacecraft commander Jim Lovell was the first one to board the spacecraft at 11.32 a.m. He was followed by the lunar module pilot, who moved in, Fred Hayes, moved into the right-hand seat at 11.32. The command module pilot stood by in the elevator with the suit technician, was the last one to come aboard. He came aboard at 11.44 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are now standing by for retraction of the white room that uh, should occur in approximately 47 seconds. When it comes back, it will come back to a 12 degree or standby position. From this position, it can be quickly brought back to the command module if there is a need for the crew to egress or if we need to get a team into the crew. At the T-minus five minute mark in the countdown, E. Swing arm number nine will come back to the fully retract position, and it will then stay in the fully retract position throughout the launch. Once the white room has been moved back to the 12 degree position, the launch escape tower above the command module will be armed. Now standing by for the movement of the swing arm nine, some five seconds from this time. T minus 43 minutes and counting, and swing arm nine should be coming back. Swing arm nine moving back now to the 12 degree position. It's about some 10 feet now from the uh, spacecraft. The vice president has arrived at the VIP site with Brand. We now have word that the vice president, Piro Agnew, and the chancellor of West Germany, Billy Brandt, have arrived at the distinguished guest site. Now T minus 42 minutes, 31 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. That's it, everybody. Click it. Roger. Command Launch Control Shift Logic is on and off. Roger. Command Launch Control Shift Logic is on and off. I gave Bergman a bad time there. It's 11.38 for Hayes. I'll correct it on my next announcement. Yeah. 
Helium 1A on up. B on up. Pilot Saturn launch control. B on up. minutes, 39 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. At this time, the command destruct system tests are now underway with the launch vehicle team. B on up. The launch escape system above the command module has now been armed, and that escape system now would be capable of lifting the command module free of the launch vehicle should a problem arise. A correction to the last announcement, the lunar module pilot Fred Hayes entered the spacecraft at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. Our countdown proceeding at this time, T-minus 39 minutes, 24 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. switch you over, uh, cut me off, this is just a line check, okay, send me to the Cape, and that's all. Roger, go ahead. Okay. Okay, okay Jack, give me what you want. Okay, Cape, stand by for a line check, please, from Houston. Okay, right. you're ready. Yep. On release. No. Now. This is a test on PAO release, test one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, test out. Jack, uh, go ahead and give me what you want, please. Back to the Cape, how you read, one? I read fine. How about you, Cape? Very weak. Okay, uh, he sounds real good here. He changed headsets. And that should make some difference. You still, you still got the Hom building one? Uh, it's still there, but it's uh, even less than it was earlier. Right. Okay. Okay, we'll do. Thirty seconds. 
is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus 34 minutes, 58 seconds and counting. At this time, the range safety command checks have just been completed. Preparations are now underway for the power transfer test. This is a critical test to ensure that the power can be transferred from the external source, which we have been using to conserve on batteries, to ensure that the power can be successfully transferred to the batteries aboard the space vehicle and that the systems are go on those space vehicle batteries. Now T minus 34 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control as we move into the final half hour of our countdown. T minus 29 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. The Brevard Sheriff's Department, Brevard County, Florida, has reported that along Route 1, the closest major highway to Kennedy Space Center, there are some 100,000 people and 25,000 cars parked watching for the launch of Apollo 13. Along the Indian and Banana Rivers, it's reported that the both rivers are literally filled with boats and spectators standing by to watch the launch. A private airport in Brevard County also reports some 500 private planes have landed and are parked at the airport. Our countdown continuing now. The power transfer test underway. T minus 29 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're at T-minus 25 minutes and counting. T-minus 25 minutes and counting, and that critical launch vehicle power transfer test has been successfully completed. The lunar module will remain on internal power for approximately 10 minutes while the instrumentation aboard the lunar module is thoroughly checked out. It will then be deactivated and won't be reactivated again until the men enter the lunar module on their trip to the moon. As the Apollo Saturn V sits on the pad at this time, it's 214,369 nautical miles from their, destina from their destination, the moon. Now, T-minus 24 minutes, 20 seconds and counting, this is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 19 minutes, 59 seconds and counting. Now, passing the 20-minute mark in our countdown, and the spacecraft test supervisor has indicated that they're running just slightly ahead of that in their countdown. The command module pilot, Jack Schweikert, is now pressurizing the service module reaction control system. This is the system on the service module, which consists of four quadrants with four engines each. Each one of these develops 100 pounds of thrust. He's arming these systems by letting the hypergolic fuels, these are monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, flow down through the system down to the final valves. Hypergolic fuels ignite on contact, so once those final valves are open, they would ignite and the system would be activated. So I could also reading out the temperatures and pressures of that system. The countdown moving along well at this time, T minus 19 minutes, four seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
is a this is Apollo Saturn launch control passing the 15 minute mark. T minus 14 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. Chill down of the second stage or S2 stage. Stark tanks is in process. This is necessary to prepare those Stark tanks for the flow of the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The S2 or second stage will ignite at some 2 minutes 46 seconds into the mission if all goes as planned. The crew has been relatively quiet answering uh, the spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin in a terse business-like uh, manner as he questions them on the certain switches and check. In the distinguished guest site, the Vice President Sparrow Agnew, the Chancellor of West Germany, Willy Brandt, and the Secretary of State Rogers, all with a large crowd over there awaiting the launch of Apollo 13. A countdown continuing to go well at this time. The spacecraft is uh, now going to full internal power. Up to this point, it's been sharing its power load with the fuel cells aboard the spacecraft with an external power source. Also being carried out at this time is a Astrocom launch circuit check. This is the circuit that's used by the astronaut, the spacecraft test conductor and launch operations manager, and the Capcom Stoney or Paul White here during the launch phase of the mission. Now T minus 13 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Roll with one click two. That's it, clip it. Pitch is zero nine zero. Zero on the off. Chuck, you're sounding good, just keep it up. Be bang, roll Thanks, pitch babe. and yaw or rate one. FDI scale is five five. Rate switch is high. CDR verified. CMP verified. Roger, direct main A, main B. CMC mode is free. Trans controller power is on and up. Stations, this is Network on Net One for final status check. Rylan, go. Bermuda, Bermuda's go. Vanguard, Alpha guarded. Go. Canary, Canary is go. Roger. Alpha. Alpha. EDF auto verified on up. Watch for the rate verified auto. Command. 
Off this is the power set in launch control. T minus nine minutes, 58 seconds and counting. The third AZ stage start tanks are now beginning their chill down. The third stage two, AZ, two, scheduled to ignite at nine minutes, 22 seconds into the mission. Also going on at this time is one of the computer AZ, checks which uh, are carried out throughout flat. the final portion of the launch. This particular one is a check out of the launch vehicle digital computer to ensure that it's ready for launch. A final check of the weather indicates that uh, earlier yeah, worries about the weather have come to naught. Weather looks good and is satisfactory, presents no constraint to our launch. Now T minus nine minutes, 25 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus five minutes, 27 seconds and counting. Now as we move into the final phase of the countdown, we're receiving go, no-go checks from various elements of the launch team. The spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, gave the test supervisor a spacecraft ready. At that time, on our large status board here in the firing room, the green light came on behind the spacecraft. Green light now is also on behind the emergency detection system. 
Now standing by for more checks, the uh, mission director, Chet Lee, from the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, says we are go for launch, and the range indicates the range is ready to support. Chill down of the S-4B stage. Chill down of the S-4B stage being completed at this time. The S-4B will ignite into the mission at 9 minutes, 22 seconds. Swing arm number 9 now is retracting to the full retract position. Swing arm number 9 coming back to the full retract position. And the director of launch operations, Walt Caprian, has given Apollo 13 a go for launch. We're now approaching the 4-minute mark. At the T-minus 4-minute mark, we'll be standing by for Jack Baltar, the launch vehicle test conductor, to say that his launch vehicle team is ready to carry out the final phase here of the countdown. At the T-minus 3-minute, 7-second mark, we will get the ignition sequence start. This will put us on an automatic sequencer, and the remainder of the count from that time will be on automatic. The sequencer can check out literally hundreds of items in the space vehicle. At the same time, the team here in the Launch Control Center will be monitoring red line values. Thank you very much. We'll temperatures and pressures, which we do not want to either go above or below. A final communications check now. The and astronaut on the Astrocom circuit and Launch Operations Manager, Paul Donnelly, during his final check, said good luck, head for the hills. He was referring to the Fraumoro, hilly Fraumoro region of the moon. As we come up on the T-minus three-minute mark at three minutes, the capsule communicator, Paul White, will begin reading out the minus time to the crew. <clears throat> Looking up at our status board now, we can see that the uh, spacecraft, or the uh, first stage preparations are now complete. The firing command has now been initiated. This is the automatic sequencer, and we have a confirmation on our status board that the launch, launch sequence has started. We're now in our final three minutes of the countdown, two minutes, 56 seconds, and Apollo 13 continues to be go. Okay, the astronaut is still reporting back point. from the spacecraft Odyssey. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell says Odyssey is go. He will be the last one to uh, perform a uh, function here during the countdown at the T-minus 45 second mark. The Commander Jim Lovell will set the final alignment of the spacecraft guidance. That's the last crew action before the uh, liftoff of Apollo 13. We continue to aim for a liftoff at 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now T-minus 2 minutes, 18 seconds and counting and our count continues to look good. Our weather is no constraint to launch today. Earlier fears about the weather uh, seem to have dissipated. A stationary front over the Florida Georgia border has not sent down the predicted bad weather that we had feared. We just passed the two-minute mark, just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown, and the pressurization now of the vehicle tanks is beginning. The third stage liquid oxygen tank has now been pressurized, and the second stage liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized. We'll be making our final transfer from external power source, that is from the external power source at the pad, to the launch vehicle batteries at the T-minus 50-second mark. We'll be keeping an eye on that power transfer at T-minus 50 seconds. The S-4B propellant, now all pressurized. S-4B propellant, that's the third stage of the Saturn V pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds, and counting. The spacecraft equipment now is on its own internal cooling. It's been uh, sharing its cooling from it, getting its cooling from an external power source up to this time. We're now approaching the T-minus one minute mark. T-minus one minute, T-minus one minute, and counting. Now in the final minute of our countdown, at the 30-second mark, swing arm number one Man, will retract. T-minus 50 seconds. As we pass the T-minus 50-second mark, the power transfer takes place. First Dave stage, Miller. second stage, third stage, and the instrument unit going to internal power. T-minus 37 seconds, and our count continues to go well. Life we'll be complete. looking for an ignition of those five First stage engines at the T-minus 8.9 second mark. We passed T-minus 30, T-minus 25 seconds, and counting, and Apollo 13 is go. T-minus 20 seconds, T-minus 20 seconds, and counting. 17, guidance release. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have lift off at 213. The five building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it has cleared the tower. This is Mission Control Houston. We appear to have a good first stage at this point. Houston, roger, roll. Flight Dynamics Officer says the projector looks good. We show one half mile in altitude at this time. 13 Houston, go at 30 seconds. Got you, got you, okay, okay, good. Roll complete and we're pitching. Roger that. Stand by for mode 1 Bravo. Mark 1 Bravo. 1 Bravo. Bravo. Command. Altitude 1.2 miles, velocity 1,500 feet per second. That's a hell of a lot cleaner than that is. That's your level, Cape. Thirteen Houston, go at one. We show the cabin relieving. Thirteen Roger. And at one minute ten seconds, we show an altitude of four point one nautical miles. Downrange one mile. All sources continue to report we're go. The trajectory on our plot boards is right on the pre-planned line. And the booster engineer reports we're now through the region of maximum dynamic pressure, and we're go. Thirteen Houston, stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, you're one, Charlie. Mark, one, Charlie. And thirteen, you're go for staging. Go for staging, Roger. We're in EDS manual. Altitude now 17 miles, coming up on staging. Inboard. Jim Lovell reports the inboard engine has shut down as scheduled. Uh, Jack, we can put inboard out 13, you're looking good. Roger. Coming up on 30 miles altitude. Test to ignition. Roger. Thirteen Houston, trajectory is good, thrust is good. Roger. Capcom Joe Kerwin confirming to the crew that the second stage looks good at this point. We're now 46 miles high, 70 miles, 78 miles downrange. Skirt. Oh, okay. Come up, please. We confirm skirt set. Roger, tower jet, mode two, Jim, looking good. Mode two. What are you trying to reach me on? Broadcast. Call right or what? Broadcast, man. Josh, we did. I'm trying to reach him on broadcast, man. No, I don't know. Reports what, that the guidance system is correcting the small errors. Yeah. 13 Houston, guidance is good, and the CMC is go. Okay, thank you, Roger. 13, Roger. Coming up now on four minutes. We're now at an altitude of 63 miles. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the trajectory. Houston, your goal at four minutes, so little red lines are right on the little white lines down here. Two minutes, seven seconds, two minutes, eight, and about five minutes on the dot of uh, real time, or four minutes and some odd. Okay, we may want to change that, considering that, uh, Roger that, not say anything. I'll be ready with both. Roger. Velocity up now to 11,000 feet per second, that's about 36% of the amount needed for a minimum orbit. We're now 75 miles in altitude. Two hundred twenty-two miles downrange now. The 
Uh, ACOM Houston reports. coming up five minutes. You're looking perfect. Over. 13, Roger. And our ACOM reports that the cabin pressure is sealed at 6.1 pounds, which is normal. And we're now 250 miles downrange, altitude 81 nautical miles. And at 5 minutes 30 seconds into the launch, we continue to look very good on the second stage. Jim Lovell just reported the inboard right, engine shut down as out. scheduled. Nope. 13 uh, Houston, stand by for S4B to COI capability. S4B to COI, Roger. Roger, you've got it now, Jim. We've got S4B to COI. A booster reports that the inboard engine uh, shutdown was a bit early. Uh, we're continuing to burn on the uh, four outboard engines. And uh, Houston, what's the story on engine five? Jim, uh, Houston, we don't have a story on why the inboard out was uh, early, but the uh, other engines are go and you're go. Roger. At six minutes forty seconds. Thirteen Houston still looking good. Your gimbals are good. Trim is good. Roger. Thirteen Houston level sense arm time eight plus three eight nominal. S two cutoff time nine or plus four eight. Over. Roger nominal on the level sense arm nine or four eight on the uh, S two cutoff. That's affirmative, and stand by for S4B to orbit. Mark, you have S4B to orbit, Jim. Roger, we have S4B to orbit. We still have four good engines on the Saturn second stage. We show an altitude of 96 nautical miles, 545 downrange. And at 7 minutes 45 seconds, booster reports we are go. All four engines remaining uh, looking good. Now, the early shutdown of the center engine uh, would, would cause no problem. We would burn a little bit longer than normally scheduled. Houston looking good at 8 minutes. 13, Roger. And at 8 minutes 17 seconds, we show a velocity of 18,000 feet per second. That's about 71% of the amount needed for a minimal orbit. At 8 minutes 35 seconds, continuing to burn on the second stage. All four remaining engines looking good at this point. Apollo 13, Houston, mark level sense arm. Mark level sense arm, Roger. Apollo 13, Houston, at nine minutes, your go, the CMC is go. Here you go. 13, Roger. Our predicted shutdown time on the second stage is 9 minutes 48 seconds. Flight Director Milton Windler getting a staging status now from his flight controllers. 13 Houston, you are go for staging. 13 Roger, go for staging. Thirteen Houston, stand by for mode four capability. Mark, you have mode four, Jim. Mode four, Roger. 
staging. And level Roger report staging. staging. And there's four ignition, Houston. <laughs> Roger that, Jim. Thrust looks good. Roger. Thirteen Houston, you're looking good. Trajectory guidance, CMC are all go. Thank you, Joe. And at ten minutes thirty seconds, we are now one hundred two miles in altitude, one thousand eighty miles downrange. Houston at 11 minutes. Your go predicted cutoff on the S4B is 12 plus 34. Over. Houston, your go at 11 and a half, and predicted cutoff time is 12 plus 3, 4, over. Understand 12 plus 3, 4, predicted uh, cutoff time. That's a firm. Coming up on 12 minutes, still looking good. Standing by now for a crew report of third stage shutdown. You join uh, Haney starting Monday. Seco. Copy Seco, Jim. We're looking at the disky. Roger. No Chuck on cord. Go ahead. It's Hodges in Houston, building one. We think you sounded great. Thank you. And the flight dynamics officer says at first glance we look good on the orbit. Apollo 13 Houston, you have a go orbit all sources and the booster is safe. Over. Go orbit and the booster is safe. Thank you, Joe. Don't mention it. Houston, we copy your noun 44. Yep. Chuck, you're lovely. That's my way to your public. The booster engineer reports at this time that the S4B third stage looks good. Uh, being configured now for orbital operations. We're standing by for a confirmation from the Flight Dynamics Officer of our preliminary orbit.
Noah. You're listening to Corn. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not Noah. Apollo 13 Houston, now your preliminary orbit down here is 102.5 times 100.3, and everything is looking good. Roger, Houston, and it looks good to be up here again. I'll bet. Thirteen Houston, I have your Z torquing angle. You ready? Outside, we copy, Joe. Okay, it's plus decimal two six over. Okay, you're plus point two six. That's Roger. At 17 minutes, we've had loss of signal with the spacecraft. We'll be reacquiring shortly through the Canary Island tracking station. The uh, total burn duration on the uh, third stage uh, was about uh, 45 seconds longer than planned. We would not expect at this point that this would have any uh, serious effect on the translunar injection. The fact that we did consume uh, a bit more propellant out of the third stage than was uh, originally planned. We're standing by now for acquisition of signal through the Canary Island station. We should be reacquiring radio contact with the space back shortly.
Bye-bye, help me. Hello? Uh, that's Rod. That's Rod. That's normal. Yeah, I'm standing. This is Apollo Control. We're still scanning by for uh, any conversation with the spacecraft over Canary Islands. Uh, the booster systems engineer reports that at this point he has no explanation uh, for the early shutdown of the S-2 uh, Saturn second stage center engine. Okay, a couple minutes to LOS, Jim. Everything is looking real good. Uh, your AOS time at uh, Carnarvon will be 52.36. And uh, we don't have too much of a handle on why the inboard uh, cut off early, except that it apparently was an engine problem and not a, uh, not a switch select function. But uh, we're certain that you'll be able to make TLI based on what we're looking at now. Uh, Roger, nothing like the mineral too much. Uh, That's right. Houston, Canary LOS in 30 seconds. Request command reset, please. Roger, command reset, come on. Thank you. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal now with the spacecraft at the Canary Island tracking station. We won't reacquire again until the spacecraft uh, reaches the uh, tracking station at Canarvon, Australia. That will be at a ground elapsed time of uh, 52 minutes 36 seconds. Uh, recapping. Uh, 
at the time we lost contact with this case brown through canary islands uh, we look to be in very good shape uh, for the uh, translunar injection burn uh, with the uh, saturn third stage the uh, second stage uh, center engine shut down about two minutes early the total uh, overburn time on the uh, third stage was about uh, 10 seconds. Uh, we don't expect that this would have uh, any effect on the translunar injection. At uh, 25 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, this is Mission Control, Houston. Firing Room 1 at the Launch Control Center at Kennedy Space Center. The Vice President of the United States and Chancellor Billy Brown are now entering the firing room. They're making their way up to the management level of the firing room where they'll be greeted here no, by the senior members the of the launch team. Dr. Kurt H. Debus, the director of Kennedy Space Center, and now Jake Mahan, Rick Chancellor. Behind Dr. Debus is National Administrator, Dr. Thomas O'Payne. Roger that. I don't think we're using normal. Dr. Thomas O'Payne now taking a microphone and he, uh, he is going to hand that, it looks like, to the Vice President. He first is going to address the team here in the Launch Control Center. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, tell him it's live. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me back there all right? No. What's up? Get your mic over there to those people. He's talking. 
talking to no one. He's talking to the firing room. He may be talking to the firing room, but he's got a hundred million people around the world looking at him. He's looking like an idiot. No comment. The networks uh, are, are cutting him off. CBS has still got video, but no audio. I know, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna hand him my mic with a button mash live. Hand it to anybody over there just so we can hear something. Give it to Divas, give it to put it around building one over. You know. Building one over here. Okay, uh, take me off the line, placer. We're gonna run a check for building eight. Uh, Roger. Okay. of the efforts of man to improve his destiny is probably greater in this program than okay. anything that we've CBS ever turned our national right attention to. We got you and there, I can Kate. assure you that we appreciate that very much. Again, it's a pleasure to be with you, and congratulations again on an outstanding accomplishment. of Apollo 13 and to have this opportunity not only to extend my personal good wishes for a successful journey to the astronauts, but also com to congratulate all those of you, those are here and many others in this great country, who are prepared and are actively involved in this project. This is already the fifth time that men are about to leave or have left as a matter of fact for the moon. But it is for that no less daring an undertaking and no less exciting to anyone who had the privilege of watching it. In Germany, and I'm sure in all of Europe, people will follow this trip with the same keen interest and the same emotions as everybody in the United States. You here, gentlemen, together with all your colleagues, indeed, are going in peace for all mankind. And on behalf of all my countrymen, I wish, wish that this not only will be a successful trip and a safe return, but further progress for mankind. Thank you very much. We in the American Space Program very much appreciate your kind words. We would like to give you a memento of your visit to Cape Kennedy to witness the launch of Apollo 13. We thought that a Saturn V rocket would be the appropriate memento, but it was too large to fit in your airplane, and so we got a somewhat smaller version here, which we hope that you will take with you as a reminder of the successful launch of Apollo 13.
Yes, man, on cue. Who called me? No, I'm trying to get over the cape to see if uh, they're going to say anything else. Is that a clip? Is that a clip from you, Kate? Right, somebody killed it, Noel. Is that it? As far as I know. Broadcast said nothing to me. Broadcast man on cue. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, the EBU is interviewing him hot and heavy. I don't know. We have any idea where it's going. We can't reach our mic over there to him. So try it again here. We got, we got 12 minutes to away. Oh, so that's my script. Can you tell him that that's not coming through that mic and ask him if he's speaking with this one? Aiden Long, Aiden Cameron Long. Okay, I just clipped him door. Billing one. Roger, roger that. Okay. We got a good circuit now. Stand by. Okay, they fixed it. We're back on you.
just checked with Donnelly. He says that it was screwed up here in the firing room and it was done by test support. I'll try to track that down a little further. Control of Houston at uh, 52 minutes. We're standing by now for acquisitional signal, and our 
Network controller reports we've just reacquired the spacecraft over the Canadian station. Can you use some loud talk? Okay, uh, Joe, uh, everything is going good. We're proceeding in the town line in good fashion. Uh, I've got a P-52 flying. I can give you the uh, poking angle. I'm ready for him, Jack. Okay, uh, use noun 26, uh, uh, star 26 and 33. The star angle difference was all balls. Now 93 minus 067 minus all balls plus 0.162. The time of torquing was 45 minutes, 35 seconds. 15, 14 minutes from now. Oh, well, that sounds uh, marginally acceptable. For a new CMP event to build. Yeah. Okay, uh, 13, we got nothing for you at the moment. Everything's looking good. We're looking at your data now. Between LOS Carnarvon and ALS Hawaii. Okay, stand by, Howard. Say again. 
No questions from Houston. Roger that. No questions from Houston. Roger. This is mission control at 57 minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, not much conversation with the crew on this pass over the Carnarvon tracking station. Uh, Jack Swigger reported that uh, the platform had been aligned uh, as called for in the flight plan. Uh, there's not a great deal of activity uh, scheduled in the flight plan at this time. Uh, flight director Milton Wengler has uh, checked the status with his flight controllers, and Capcom Joe Crowan will be passing that up to the crew shortly. Also signal now with the spacecraft uh, through Carnarvon. Uh, Apollo 13 will be coming within range of the tracking antennas at the Honeysuckle Creek Australia station in less than a minute. We'll stand by for uh, reacquiring. minutes into the flight of Apollo 13, we should be reacquiring radio contact with the spacecraft through Honeysuckle Creek momentarily. Roger that. Recapping briefly the situation during the launch, we had a uh, normal first stage burn. Uh, the second stage emission was normal, uh, up through five minutes and 30 seconds, at which time the inboard engine, engine number five, shut down early. Uh, the center engine had been scheduled to shut down at about 7 minutes and 44 seconds ground elapsed time. The cutoff on the second stage was at about 9 minutes 48 seconds. About uh, 30 seconds early. And the total uh, excess burn time on the third stage was about uh, 10 seconds. Capcom Joe, Sh Joe Kerwin has just put in a call to the crew. Uh, we've had acquisitional signal. We'll stand by for a conversation with the spacecraft. Apollo 13, Houston, through Honeysuckle. Roger, Houston, 13 here, breathing monitor. Okay, S-band sounds good, Jim. Building one, how's your audio?
And that was in that uh, we do have a lock to save our pyro bus, and it takes the key to remove that lock, and we broke the darn key off in the lock, and it took us a little while to get it out, and we did have a spare key, and we took that off. And that's the sum and substance of our problems with the spacecraft. Uh, at approximately one hour and uh, 50 minutes before launch, uh, we did uh, run into a little God. difficulty with the lock vent valve in the S1C stage, which uh, uh, we were attempting to uh, cycle open and closed as required for the venting process, and uh, it stuck on us in the, uh, in the full open position, and uh, we ran through a repeated number of cycles attempting to, uh, to free it, and uh, for some time we're unsuccessful in doing so. It uh, causes concern in that uh, if we had not been able to close the vent valve, we would not have been able to pressurize the lock tank at T minus 72 seconds. However, we did run some uh, uh, nitrogen gas uh, through the system, and we were able to sufficiently uh, uh, raise the temperature such that we were able to close the valve, and we proceeded the rest of the way with that vent valve in a closed position at all times. And uh, we do have a second vent valve in the stage that we uh, relied on to uh, give us the uh, correct uh, conditions at time of uh, of stage pressurization at T minus 72 seconds. That's, uh, those, those two items were the sum and substance of the problems that, uh, we encountered during the, uh, entire countdown. As, uh, most of you know by this time, uh, the, uh, first stage burn was, uh, perfectly nominal. You may have noticed that it seemed, uh, almost like an eternity before the, uh, vehicle cleared the tower. Well, of course, was because uh, this is the heaviest vehicle that we've flown. It was approximately 26,000 pounds heavier at liftoff than Apollo 12, and the uh, S1C engines, though they were perfectly within specification, uh, were rated at about 100,000 pounds total thrust less than those of the world on the Apollo 12 vehicle. Uh, this this made the uh, uh, the time uh, about one and a half to three quarters of a second longer in the, in clearing the tower. All of the uh, first stage burn, as I mentioned earlier, was perfectly nominal. The second stage burn was nominal up until the time that uh, the S2 inboard engine uh, cut off. That engine is uh, normally cut off by switched electric command approximately 90 seconds before the uh, outboard engines are cut off. For some reason that we have not been able to determine at this time, the engine did cut itself off approximately two minutes earlier than planned. Now, as a result of that having happened, the outboard engines, of course, burned approximately a half a second longer. They burned to uh, fuel, de fuel depletion and made up uh, some of the uh, energy that was lost by virtue of the inboard engine having cut off early. And when we burned the S4B, it uh, burned approximately uh, half a minute longer than originally planned in order to make up the deficiency. And at the end of the uh, first burn of the S4B, the deficiency was made up. Now, we had uh, approximately a 2,200-pound payload margin uh, for this mission. We used up a little bit of that margin by the fact that the engine did cut off early, but we did not use up enough to uh, to uh, lose any confidence in our ability to perform the TLI maneuver. We still do have a three sigma capability. So uh, uh, we have no reason to suspect that uh, we will not have a good uh, TLI burn and uh, fly a perfectly no nominal mission from this point on. I guess that's all I have in the way of uh, of general comments, so feel free to ask any questions if you choose to. Hey, Dick, right down here. Why, why did we uh, nominally have the main stage engines lower rated than thrust, if I understood you correctly? They weren't, they were, well, you know, uh, the uh, the vendor guarantees engine performance to, within cert to a certain specification. These engines did meet that specification. It just so happens that they weren't quite as hot as the ones we flew on Apollo 12. There's nothing wrong with them. I don't, I don't mean to imply that. I'm just explaining to you why 
It took a little longer to clear the tower than uh, it had taken on previous missions. Up there. Go ahead. Uh, does the longer time for the F-4 B burn affect the timeline at all? I, uh, I, I don't think it affects it significantly. I think we're going to be within seconds. Certainly not more than a minute or two. Thanks, Andy. Uh, do you have that total liftoff weight since it was the heaviest, other than 26,000 more than the other? No, I don't. It was, uh, if, if you recall what Apollo 12 was, that 25,600 pounds to it. That was about 6.4, but we'll check that figure for you. Now, I'll, all right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Red. Uh, you told us there was a 22,000 pound payload margin. A 2,200 pound. 200, thanks. How much of that margin has been consumed, please? As uh, best we can determine, we, we, we used up a significant for, uh, proportion of that margin. Now, uh, beyond that margin, we still have what we call a three sigma capability. So we have the full three sigma capability plus somewhat of a margin. And at the time I left the, uh, uh, firing room, uh, we did not have all of the numbers in yet telling us exactly how much we had, but we did, we're able to establish that we still had, we did have the full three sigma margin. The, the 2200 pounds was something that was a little bit of gravy that we had in addition to that. And is it a fact that you've just got enough for TLI now? Yep. For a three sigma condition, in other words, for a worst case condition, if you put all of your three sigma errors together, which is the basis on which we plan our missions, we have enough reserve to handle that. Thank you. We, we still have margin. For the we still way. do have. We have all the margin we wanted to have. We have not so used up all our margin or even come close to using we it. We have our full three sigma margin. Uh, on that on that weight again, what? Where do you get in the extra 22,000 pounds? Is that fuel and is so located where? Are they, as far as the margin itself was concerned, well, we flew, we flew with, uh, some extra propellants aboard, uh, this vehicle. Part of it for the reason of flying this mission and part of it to just get a little bit of, uh, added knowledge, uh, in, uh, uh as a preliminary to flying the, uh, the J missions, which are going to be missions where we fly with heavier payloads than we've been flying, flying to this time. So we loaded the tanks up uh, more than was required to fly the mission. Go ahead, Do you Did have enough include... fuel left for the, uh, to guide the S-40 for the lunar impact? I asked that question uh, when I left the uh, firing room. The best answer I could get at that time was that uh, uh, we should not affect our capability of uh, flying the nominal uh, uh, lunar impact with the S-4B. In other words, we expect to impact the S-4B where we plan to. Ed, over here. Oh, that's the same question okay. I wanted to ask. Do you have any over here? I don't see any more hands. Okay, we'll take two over here and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Mattingly was in the control room. Was there no concern about his being infectious with German measles? It, he was in the control room in Houston. Mattingly left uh, left uh, the case last night. I think we'd have to. We'll try to find that out for you, Ben. But I don't think uh, we have any details. Ken Mattingly observed the launch from the mission control center in Houston, not here. Did you have a question, Andy? Go ahead. Could you give us the figures again for the uh, additional burn of the S-2 and the S-4B? Uh, yes, the uh, the S-2 uh, inboard engine, the center engine, uh, cut off two minutes and seven seconds earlier than it was supposed to. As a result of that, the outboard engines burned 33.96, roughly 34 seconds longer than they would have had the inboard engine uh, burn for its proper time. As far as the S-4B is concerned, the uh, the delta in time was about the same, 33.97, roughly 34 seconds longer. Okay, we'll take one here. 
one one last thing about this extra fuel. You're absolutely going to get out. Did you have extra fuel in the S4B by any chance uh, as a result of running this weight up, and did that give you a little more leeway? Yes, we had some extra fuel in all three stages. We had about the same amount of lock that we flew on uh, Pete Conrad's mission. We had uh, approximately 9,500 pounds more RP-1 than we had on Apollo 12. And we had more locks and hydrogen in both the other stages. I knew those figures, but I've forgotten them. I can't give them to you. Did that make any difference in the police signal? Well, it helped us yeah. out. Okay. All right, we'll take one final one up here. Can we have exact liftoff time, please? Well, let me uh, check here. It was uh, 600 milliseconds late. Two two thirteen point zero zero point six. Okay, thank you very much. That completes the conference. We should be coming back up on uh, an acquisition in about 10 minutes. There's one thing I said that I'm not sure I need to tell you something about what it does to the timeline. Go ahead. That's back to you. Back to us. Okay, Hodges, I'm on the line. All right.
This is Apollo Control at 1 hour 28 minutes. We'll be reestablishing radio communications with Apollo 13 in about 40 seconds. As the uh, station comes within range of the Wymus, Mexico tracking station. During the uh, launch phase, the medic reports the following heart rates. These are maximum heart rates for the three crewmen. Uh, Commander Jim Lovell had a maximum heart rate during the launch of 116. Uh, the command module pilot, Jack Swigert, uh, had a maximum heart rate of 102. And uh, the lunar module pilot, Fred Hayes, oh, also had a maximum heart rate of 102. Capcom Joe Kerwin has just put in a call to the crew through. Wymus will stand by. Houston through Guaymas, over. Apollo 13, Houston. Thirteen Houston over. Apollo thirteen Houston over. Houston, over. Go ahead. Hello there. We thought you were still up there. And we're just coming up on Baja, and I've got the TV on. Uh, you want it? Uh, I don't think we require it just yet, uh, Jack, but uh, we'll uh, we'll come in it when we're ready. I believe they're dumping the tape now. The uh, poster looks good. The spacecraft looks good on uh, the few minutes data we've had. I found it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like it? Came me to the LED down there, uh, throwing things and I'm throwing things, and I finally got a chance to look out and see the world. That was Jack Swigert reporting uh, 
apparently his first view out the windows. Uh, Apollo 13 Houston, I have the TLI plus 90 and liftoff plus 8 pads whenever you're ready. This is the TLI plus 90 pad, SPS, GNN, 63825 minus 154 plus 132-044-063-045-53 plus zero 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 one plus six six three four zero one eight zero two two eight zero zero one H A is N slash A H P is plus zero zero one seven niner six six five two two seven three seven Six six two six five two six one five five four one five seven. Four sight star is Zeta Sagittarii up zero eight zero right two one minus two two eight one minus zero two five zero zero one one four zero seven three four zero eight seven zero one three three two one four set stars Arcturus de Nebula roll zero four four pitch zero one two yaw Zero two five. No knowledge, over. Uh, Joe, uh, we had a dropout of signal there uh, about midway or about just at the start of your pad, and uh, Fred didn't get it. We'd like you to start over again. Could you please? Sure thing. You want the whole thing? Yes, I think you better. Okay, TLI plus 90. SPS, GNN. 63825. Minus one five four plus one three two zero zero four zero six four five five three minus zero four niner one seven plus zero 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 one plus six six three four zero one eight zero two two eight zero zero one N slash A plus zero zero one seven niner six six five two two seven three seven six six two six five two six one five five four one five seven Zeta Sagittarii up zero eight zero right two one minus two two eight one minus zero two five zero zero one one four zero seven three four zero eight seven zero one three three two one four set stars Arcturus de, de Nebula Roll zero four four, pitch zero one two, yaw zero two five. No, I'll let you over. Okay, uh, Joe, that's uh, six three eight two five minus uh, one five four plus one three two zero zero four zero six 
4055. Fred Houston, stand by one. Line at 049017 plus 00001 plus 66340. Fred Houston, over. Uh, go ahead. Uh, that's correct. Uh, uh, we'd like you to go to the S-Man Ox TV, switch to TV, please. Okay, it's set to TV. Okay, we're not, we're not getting a signal. Okay, okay yeah. I'll go to transmit, Joe. Okay, you can continue reading back. Okay, uh, roll uh, 180, pitch 228, yard 001, in flash aid, plus 0017, enter, 
while there is water. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. You're in the Western Hemisphere. Okay, Joe. It appears like that uh, we're, we've crossed out into the Gulf of Mexico here. And uh, I've got a peninsula or an island that's down there. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, okay, Joe. It appears like that uh, we're, we've crossed out into the Gulf of Mexico here. And uh, I've got a peninsula or an island that's down there. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, Uh, Roger, Jack. Uh, we we see that. Of course, there's a lot of cloud cover, and uh, you see it more clearly than than we do. But it it does look like the Earth, not the Moon. Uh, Roger, Jack. Uh, we we see that. Of course, there's a lot of cloud cover, and uh, you see it more clearly than than we do. But it it does look like the Earth, not the Moon. Uh, Apollo 13, Houston. We've had LOS Milo now. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul 13 Houston, we've had LOS Milo now. Thank you very much. Of the uh, southern coast of the United States, but uh, we'll stay with it and perhaps we'll get a better picture in the audio. Get off the audio. Apollo 13, Houston, request to and accept for a stake vector, over. Check your live air to ground all, you okay now? Uh, Roger, Roger, you can find out why I'm building an angle. Oh, okay. Of audio on there. Well, that was my fault, not building an angle. All right. I just didn't get off of it quick enough. I was going okay. to do something for Doug. Y'all watch me on that.
Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, the computer is yours, Jim. Thank you. And you are, you are go for TLI. Uh, Huntsville reports that you have a uh, six-second propellant pad, which is uh, three seconds more than a three-sigma case. So you're good on consumables. The uh, IU is uh, so good that we're not going to update it. The only change we have for you is in the uh, TLI checklist at 57 minutes where you slew the FDAI to 18 degrees. We recommend 20 degrees there. And we recommend that you look for 8 degrees instead of 6 degrees at ignition. The uh, S4B is riding on the top of its dead man. Understand, and uh, just out of curiosity, uh, was that engine out uh, to me the more S4B fuel? Uh, the engine out did cause you to use uh, more S4B fuel, uh, about a 10 second longer burn, but you're still go. Okay, thank you. And 13 Houston, uh, we're ready to support fire alarm and docking probe extension whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, Houston, the uh, docking probe has been extended and all indications are nominal. Uh, we're down to uh, fire alarm now and uh, we'll get ready. Okay, Jim. Okay, Houston, my circuit breaker is on, they're closed, the quench of logic 2 on and up, and we're headed by. Okay, 13, your go for fire alarm. We've had loss of signal now with the uh, spacecraft through the uh, Vanguard uh, tracking ship. We'll be reacquiring at uh, Canary Islands in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, Roger, uh, 13, go ahead. Roger, uh, we have our sequential app, trigger breakers in, and our sequential logic two on and off, and we're just going back to your confirmation for go. Oh, sorry, 13, you didn't copy. You are go for pyro arm, over. Okay, fine, thank you.
Apollo 13, Houston. Uh, about two and a half minutes to LOS, Jim, and your uh, AOS at Carnarvon will be two plus two five plus five zero. Over. Apollo 13, Houston, LOS in about one minute. At LOS, we'd like uh, command reset and then normal. lost contact now with the spacecraft through the Canary Islands tracking station. We'll be reacquiring in a little less than 30 minutes at a ground elapsed time of 2 hours, 26 minutes, uh, when the spacecraft comes within range of the tracking antennas at Carnarvon, Australia. Uh, during the uh, pass over the United States and out over the uh, Atlantic, uh, Capcom Joe Curlin gave the crew a preliminary go-ahead for translunar injection. We have adequate propellant margins on the uh, Saturn third stage. Uh, despite the uh, some 10 seconds of additional burn and in getting into orbit due to the uh, early shutdown of the second stage center engine, it is not expected that the somewhat uh, later injection time will have any significant effect on the flight plan. The uh, preliminary time for the beginning of the translunar injection burn is uh, 2 hours, 35 minutes, 27 seconds. The flight dynamics officer is in the process now of updating that time, but we don't expect uh, uh, a significant change. At 1 hour, 57 minutes, 55 seconds, this is Mission Control, Houston.
5 o'clock this afternoon. No, I don't. You ever heard anything on it? Yeah, it's Mrs. Lobble. Just stand by. We'll, we'll announce it. Okay, well, I want to... I want to know a little more about it myself. So do I. Because all I know is that Mrs. Lovell was... Okay. We all were the one we're going to have six years to play. What's that, shift change? Negative.
now, Doyle. Roger. Uh, Tom, you back and tell me, is our TV pass of 428 uh, local 315 GET still valid? That's a Roger. Okay, thank you very much. changes, but not on this. They don't come up until we get on the EVA. Here, Roger. Thank you very much.
seconds. This is Apollo Control at 2 hours 25 minutes. Apollo 13 is now about uh, 10 minutes away from the uh, scheduled ignition of the S-4B engine to start the spacecraft uh, on its way to the moon. Uh, the flight dynamics officer advises that the uh, planned time for the beginning of that burn will be 2 hours 35 minutes 44 seconds ground elapsed time. Our network controller reports that we've just had acquisition of signal uh, with the spacecraft uh, from Carnarvon. Uh, during this pass, flight controllers will be looking at the spacecraft and the uh, launch vehicle, the S-4B, uh, one last Thank time before uh, translunar injection. Mm -hmm. Joe Reed, you're loud and clear. We're sitting here uh, monitoring time base 6. You can see countdown. We're 20 seconds away. Okay, we're just starting to get data, and everything still looks good to us. Hey, Joe, at uh, 2 hours and 12 minutes, the O2 flow highlight came on and it's been pegged high ever since, so it's been on about 14 minutes. Uh, Roger 13, uh, we're looking at it. Time base 6. Building 1, please confirm Copy time base 6. Say again. Please confirm air ground. Oh, Roger. Are you having trouble hearing me? Yeah, sometimes you're real, real soft, and sometimes you're 5 by. You're real, real soft, right? Apollo 13 Houston, uh, you have a go for all systems, and the uh, O2 flow high uh, jack is uh, nominal with the, uh, the waste tank vent open at this time, and uh, it's no sweat. Okay, just wanted you all to check it for me. Okay, we did. Thank you.
The crew is rather quiet at this time, preparing uh, for that translunar injection burn. Uh, the burn again scheduled to begin at 2 hours 35 minutes 44 seconds. The predicted duration of the burn is 5 minutes 47 seconds. And we expect that the uh, spacecraft uh, and S-4B will accelerate some 10,417 feet per second as a result of that maneuver. Can you find him? Uh, we will not get data from the drone. We will be out of acquisition uh, with the spacecraft at the time the uh, maneuver occurs. Uh, three Araya aircraft, Apollo Range Instrumented Aircraft, are stationed in the ground track off the coast of Australia uh, underneath uh, the point on Earth where the translunar injection burn will be occurring. And they'll be recording data from it, which we could play back uh, somewhat later if necessary. And the booster engineers just reported that the S-4B chill down in preparation for the uh, burn has begun. Houston, uh, we'll be losing data from Carnarvon in about one minute. We'll probably have voice through Orion. Everything is hunky-dory, and we'll be listening for you to tell us how the burn goes. Okay, this is 13. We're standing by two. of signal now through Canada, just a com check, over. and Capcom Joe Cronin has just put in a call for all the Araya aircraft. Okay, Jim, it's not the best, but we're reading you. Roger. Communications will continue to be somewhat noisy uh, during the time that uh, conversation from the spacecraft is being relayed through the Araya aircraft. And as mentioned before, we, we will not see the uh, telemetry data uh, on the burn, but we do hope to get voice reports on the progress of the maneuver from the crew. Uh, we're now just a little more than one minute away from the scheduled beginning of that burn.
Copy that, Jim. Good deal. Copy that, Jim. Good deal. Jim Level reports being out of mission. should be about 5 minutes, 47 seconds. Roger. Uh, Jim Level just reported that everything uh, looks good with that boom. Well, we're still about seven minutes away from reacquiring the spacecraft through the uh, station at Hawaii, at which time we've got our first good look at the trajectory as a result of this boom. into the uh, translunar injection burn, some uh, two minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the uh, maneuver, which will start Apollo 13 en route to the moon.
seconds away from the scheduled shutdown time. Uh, Jim Lovell re reported a few moments ago that uh, they're experience a bit, experiencing a bit of vibration uh, on the S-4B. Uh, previous crews have also reported uh, a similar experience toward the end of the burn. Engine off. report of uh, engine off came about five or six seconds uh, after the... 13 years, we will have you through Hawaii in three minutes. I will through Hawaii in three minutes. Our communications continuing to come to us uh, relayed through the Araya aircraft. Uh, Captain Joe Kerwin advised uh, Lovell and the Apollo 13 crew that will be reacquiring uh, a little less than three minutes from now through Hawaii, at which time we should get uh, good solid S-band communications. And also our first look at uh, the trajectory of Apollo 13 following the burn. communications is getting quite noisy at this point through the Araya relay. Uh, levels reports of ignition and uh, engine shutdown would indicate that the burn went at least fairly close to nominal. And he reported engine shutdown about six seconds uh, following the time that the engine uh, was scheduled to uh, shut down. And we'll be requiring that in about uh, 45 seconds. signal at Hawaii. We'll stand by for a call to the crew. Apollo 
Apollo 13, Houston through Hawaii, over. Uh, 13 Houston, uh, you're weak but clear. It'll probably get better in a second. We're standing by for the burn report. And 13 Houston, a booster reports uh, that everything looks good with the S-4. Well, good, Houston. Uh, the ride was uh, very uh, nominal. We had a little vibration, though, during most of the run. Mark Haley, Jim, you're you call on that, Jim. Talk. Okay, uh, Joe. The only uh, information we have is uh, that the uh, uh, reservation area for uh, uh, right, AT&T starts at 413, but they'll probably have a little before that. But uh, they have uh, an actual uh, uh, 3.0. Showtime of 4.28. Oh, Roger. They don't get us for much better than that. Uh, and, uh, about the burn time, did you notice? And they don't have anything okay, uh, uh, other than uh, they have uh, something really far, but like a three, 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 three,
just wondering how long it's going to take. I see that you're back, Billy Mark. Touch that normality button. Okay. With mission control, we're now at two hours, 54 minutes with the crew uh, preparing for the CSM uh, separation from the S-4B, the subsequent docking uh, with the lunar module and the ejection of the uh, land and command module from the Saturn third stage. Uh, the times of all of those events are all, almost precisely as uh, indicated in the flight plan. The separation Maneuver is scheduled to occur at uh, ground elapsed time of 3 hours, 6 minutes, 37 seconds. And the uh, uh, docking would come then with the LEM at uh, 3 hours, 16 minutes, ground elapsed time. Our displays in mission control are showing the effects of the uh, translunar injection burn. We currently show the spacecraft at an altitude of 1,100 83 nautical miles, traveling at a velocity of 31,406 feet per second.
All of 13, Houston. Go ahead. We see the booster doing all the right things. And Fido says your trajectory looks good and uh, looks like we'll stick with a pretty close to nominal mid-course, too. We'll have some numbers for you later. Okay, and we concur. The at uh, 4 b is Roger. Apollo 13, Houston, we'd like Omni Alpha, over. Houston, now request on me, Charlie. Right on. Hey, Larry. Uh, I understand that Kati at the Cape has uh, a tape. Uh, 13 will be doing a handover now. And the uh, other okay. uh, ceremonial type stuff down there. Uh, he, we want to get it on the release line. Have you all talked to him about it? Last <laughs> up, you know. Booster engineer reports the uh, S4B is nearly in the proper attitude. Stand by me, Larry. We're about uh, five and a half minutes from the scheduled time of separation, and we are expecting that the crew will have the television uh, transmitter and camera on, uh, beginning at a ground elapsed time of about uh, three hours fifteen minutes uh, for television coverage of the uh, docking. Apollo 13, Houston, you are go for T&D. Okay, Joe, thank you. And uh, 13, Houston, uh, check your noun 17 for extraction pitch attitude. It should be 319 degrees, over. Okay, well, I got it.
got the damn thing stuck in my mouth. Okay. Uh, okay, Doyle, the earliest we can possibly expect television and audio with it is 413. The latest it'll possibly go is 616, okay? Okay, we're, we're past 413 now, right? Okay, Roger. Okay. Roger that. We're expecting them to come in, uh, in on time at 428, but, uh, you know, they had it on early last time, so just Roger. hang in there, sweetie pie. Mm-hmm. Let me know when you go to color radio and I'll verify for you. Roger. Affirmative, your go for pyro arm, and uh, recommend you secure the cabin pressurization. Uh, we did. We closed the uh, weight vent vent valve there. Okay, uh, we're reading six psi in the cabin, Jack. Roger, Joe. Thank you very much. data uh, here on the ground indicates that the spacecraft has separated from the S-4B. Astronaut uh, Jack Swigert at this time would be in the uh, commander's couch, the left-hand couch, at the controls of the spacecraft during the transposition and docking maneuvers. And we should be getting uh, television transmissions from the spacecraft uh, beginning at about 3 hours 15 minutes ground elapsed time. Quite a bang, Joe. We're separated. Pitched around about uh, six degrees now. Uh, Roger, Jack. We see you pitching. Okay, we got the uh, flaw panels. One of them's out front now. Awesome. Uh, Swigert reporting that the slaw panels on the S4B are coming into view. We're getting television signals now from the spacecraft, a bit earlier than expected. Uh, the crew is apparently somewhat ahead of the timeline in the transposition and docking 
I'll maneuver. We'll stand by for a television picture. B minus its uh, slaw panels at this time, a top view of the limb. At last report, uh, Swigert said they were 80 feet away from the S4B, and uh, that distance should be closing. Saturn third stage, and uh, the lunar module is coming to us from about 5,000 miles uh, beyond Earth. The spacecraft and uh, S-4B traveling at a speed 
of about 22,900 feet per second at this time. TV, if you could come down to F-22 again. Uh. 
Doctor. Or right here, understand hard doctor. Could be a, uh, you said one more thing on the TV, if you could come down to F-22 again. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, Roger, I'm going He's apparently maneuvering the camera inside the uh, spacecraft for an interior view at this point. We'll stand by and see if we've got enough light inside the spacecraft to get a usable picture. Houston, over. Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, with the uh, 
direct sunlight from the window out of the uh, TV camera field as it is right now, the system, uh, and we'd and like you to open it up okay, and, uh, with the, uh, and uh, hit the direct sunlight from the window out of the, the uh, uh, window. Okay. TV camera field as it is now. Uh, we'd like you to open it up an F stop or so, and uh, if convenient, try and keep that bright spot out of the window. Okay.
detail than I have on the uh, monitor here. Uh, no, we probably don't, hey, but it's kind good, of a good. neat picture anyway. Okay, I hope you got more detail than I have on the uh, monitor here. Uh, no, we probably don't, but it's kind of a neat picture anyway. Uh, Houston, uh, we're now going to finish repressurizing the tunnel. Houston, roger. Uh, Houston, uh, we're now going to finish repressurizing the tunnel. Houston, roger. This view is uh, looking up into the docking tunnel of the command module with the tunnel light showing uh, toward the top of the tunnel. At this point, we're getting a good view of Jack Swigert in the left-hand seat of the command module.
in Houston, go ahead. Uh, we'd kind of like to hold off on the, uh, start the vetting again, uh, until we get the things uh, uh, to come uh, back up inside here. Go ahead. I wonder if you might give us a call, uh, uh find us with an entry back. Uh, okay, 13, we will do. Uh, come back up inside here. Uh, what if you might give us a call, uh, find us with an entry back. Uh, okay, 13, will do.
Now, although we have a rather dim picture at this time, we can see uh, Jim Lovell uh, working in the tunnel area. Uh, Lovell has removed the hatch cover, inspected the uh, docking latches, and reported that uh, everything was in order in the tunnel. Uh, he should be uh, shortly attaching the umbilical to the lunar module, which will provide power to the heaters and some of the critical LEM guidance equipment, and then reinstalling the uh, tunnel hatch. Houston, for your information, the F-4B vet is proceeding on schedule. Okay, uh, Joe. 13 Houston, for your information, the F-4B vet is proceeding on schedule. Now it's the particles that the outside yeah, I guess I didn't need to tell you. Yeah, Joe, that's uh, uh, concerned with all the doubt of the particles that the uh, going by outside here. Yeah, I guess I didn't need to tell you. Looks like Jim is uh, connecting the umbilical at this time, is that right? Yeah, that's the verb, uh, verb. Joe, do you have any uh, detail up in there at all on the monitor? It looks like I can, uh, I can make out. It looks the, like uh, Jim is uh, connecting the umbilical at this time, is that right? Uh, we can see the probe pretty well, and we can see his hand uh, quite well there. I can make out the probe and drogue a little bit. Uh, not much else. We can see the probe pretty well, and we can see his hand uh, quite well there.
Okay, Fred, real good. Okay, we're going to take an out that view now out the uh, left back, Joe. Okay, Fred, real good. This television transmission has been going on now for about 40 minutes. And during that period of time, the spacecraft has covered more than 5,000 miles. We currently show an altitude of 10,481 nautical miles.
get ready for uh, living trick. Okay, that looks pretty good, Fred. You got that uh, picture looking back up there, uh, Joe. Get ready for uh, living trick. Okay, that looks pretty good, Fred. Scheduled uh, CSM loan ejection time. 
at that time uh, the uh, crew will activate a switch which separates the uh, or which uh, fires pyrotechnics separating uh, tie down straps and the uh, spring actuators at the attached points of the lamb landing gear I will eject the lamb in the command and service module at a velocity of about eight tenths of a foot per second uh, this will be coupled then with a a short burn with the reaction control system jets, adding another four tenths of a foot per second uh, to the separation velocity, giving them a total separation velocity of 1.2 feet per second. We've been advised that uh, within a few minutes we will have to recycle the converter, which uh, converts the television picture we're receiving from sequential black and white uh, to color. Uh, this would require the uh, converter to be down uh, for a couple of minutes while it's reloaded with tape. And in, in that uh, interim period of time, uh, we would expect the picture to be down. Apollo 13, you Go ahead. Okay, uh, we'll be waiting for you to uh, tell us that uh, you feel you're safely you just... clear the booster and, and uh, give us a go to command the booster and its yaw maneuver. Okay, uh, we'll be waiting for you to uh, tell us that uh, you feel you're safely clear the booster and, and uh, give us a go to command the booster and its yaw maneuver.
Houston, did you, uh, Roger, we can talk. did you talk to my last about giving us a go for the yaw? Yeah, we're maneuvering, Joe, and, uh, we hadn't uh, picked her back up again yet. Okay, uh, do you want to wait till you acquire it before we yaw it? How much time do you have, Houston? Can you wait or do you want to do it right now? We can wait if you want us to, Jim. Why don't you just wait a little bit? Okay. Jack, uh, they're not willing to pin it down to a specific number right now because uh, they say the uh, the tanks will warm up later on and the apparent consumption will go down, but it was nominal. Okay. That's, that's better than sound work.
try to give you a yes, we're gonna try to give you a shot of the S four B with the uh, T B up with the uh, number three. Okay, uh, real good, Jack. Uh, our uh, S band signal strength has been fluctuating. Uh, does it seem to be going all right up there in the auto track mode? Okay, uh, real good, Jack. Uh, our uh, S band signal strength has been fluctuating. Uh, does it seem to be going all right up there in the auto track mode? Point, Joe. Minus one for four, up about eighty-five. All right, now I'm dropped off to about the seventy percent point, Joe. Jim, uh, we had a garbled one there for a few seconds, and uh, we don't have one at this moment. Okay, I can uh, I can see the S4B now at the hatch window, and it. Uh, we had a garbled okay, one there for a few seconds. Okay, Jim. Suddenly we have a, a very good picture. We don't have okay. one at this moment. Okay, I can uh, I can see the S4B now at the hatch window, and it. Okay, Jim. Suddenly we have a very good picture. Seconds, I think, aren't they? They're fixing it. What? S start it up. Burn it. Yeah, they're trying to hold it until they burn it. No, I don't believe they're going to go at 14. I believe they put it off to 18. Hopefully, we'll be able to see it light off. We we haven't yet. Uh, TV first. The, uh, Roger that. That's pretty. 
Okay, stand by, I'll check. Uh, Roger that, uh, Jack Booster says that's great. Uh, he says the 
boosters doing its thing normally. Uh, and we don't see much uh, on the television at all. And Apollo 13 Houston, uh, we'd like to change the S band antenna configuration. Like you to go Omni Delta. Like you to go manual mode on the high gain. Evasive maneuver uh, appeared to be nominal. The lock stump time is now four plus three nine plus two zero, about three minutes late. Uh, Roger. Mr. Engineer reports the preliminary indications are that our uh, uh, Saturn S4B evasive maneuver uh, was successful. The flight dynamics officer will be evaluating the uh, trajectory to assure that we've got the kind of separation from the spacecraft that we were looking for, and also to uh, determine to what extent we're yeah, heading toward the trajectory which would impact uh, three, the please. S4B on right. the moon. At 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, there will be a press conference in the News Center Auditorium. This is the small auditorium in Building 1 uh, with Ken Mattingly, uh, astronaut Mattingly, until a few days ago was the prime command module pilot for the mission. And uh, due to exposure to measles, it was replaced by Jack Swigert. Mattingly has been in the control center and is currently in the control center uh, observing the progress of the mission. Uh, to repeat, uh, that press conference with astronaut Mattingly is scheduled for 6 p.m. Central Standard Time in the News Center Auditorium.
right. Uh, Larry, we're going to go back okay, to the GR1 now. Roger. Roger 13, we see it, looks good. Uh, Roger. Hmm. Hey, he's up finding something for uh, some fellow. He'll be right back. something for me? Surely. Go by that damn cafeteria and get me some matches. I've been sitting up here with a dead pipe for three solid hours. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll be happy to. Okay, I'll see you, Bob.
now, Cut. Oh, okay. They just ain't saying nothing. Yeah. I'll get back to you when I can. Huh. Okay, I just want to let you know we are set up for the press conference over here whenever they arrive. They just walked out the door. Roger. Oh, 13 Houston, request on the Alpha now, over.
This is Apollo Control at 4 hours 37 minutes. And we're now about 3 minutes away from the scheduled lock dump, the uh, propulsive vent of liquid oxygen uh, through the engine nozzle of the S-4B. The uh, Saturn Instrument Unit will command this maneuver, will command the lock dump, and uh, the locks will flow out the engine bell for 48 seconds or until the tank is empty, uh, whichever comes first. The uh, preliminary uh, plan would be for the lock stop to produce a change in velocity of about 28 feet per second, uh, which would contribute to the trajectory change, placing the S-4B on an impacting trajectory with the moon. Uh, subsequent uh, mid-course corrections using the two 70-pound uh, thrust auxiliary propulsion system units on the S-4B uh, would be intended to uh, correct this trajectory and uh, uh, bring it into the precisely pre-planned limits. serving as capsule communicator in place of astronaut Joe Curlin.
about 713, so you can kind of be prepared for a Roger that. swing and little change of shift briefing about uh, 730. Roger that. We're planning on it. Don't, don't let us down. This is Apollo Control. The Ken Mattingly press conference is scheduled to begin uh, shortly in the MSC News Center Auditorium. Uh, during the press conference, we will uh, tape any conversation with the spacecraft, play that back immediately following the press conference. At 4 hours 45 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. It's your ball game, Building 1. Anytime you're ready. Roger, one, they're not up yet. Okay. 